today we will be discussing the Naya philosophy, the second pramana known as inference or anumana. As you know that Nayaka's village has four pramanas, that means four sources of valid knowledge. One is perception or pratyaksha. The second pramanas or the valid pramanas is known as inference or anumana. The third pramanas is known as comparison or upamana. And the last one, the valid testimony or sabda. Or today we will discuss only inference. What are the constituent of inference? Why at all Nayaka's village? that inference is a valid pramana and if at all they are believing under what ground they prove that, that inference can be a valid pramana. All these things today are topic for the discussion. Last class we have completed perception by saying that ordinary perception are of three types, ordinary perception is known as logical perception and the three types of logical perception are known as nirvikalpaka, sabikalpaka and pratabhyajana and respectively the English translation are as indeterminate perception, determinate perception and recognition. Further also, if you remember the last class we have discussed that extraordinary perception is known as alokika perception which is of three kinds. The first one is samanya lakshana pratyakya. The second one is Jnana Lakshana Pratyakya and the last one is recognition or Pratyabhi Jnana. So therefore, the last class ends with the perception as a valid pramana. So today we will start inference as the second valid pramana according to Naya system. Now what they explain that Anumana can be divided into two words or split into two words, one is Anu, the another one is Mana because Anu Mana is a Sanskrit term. Anu means after and Mana means cognition. That means anything we cognized after some Pramana that will be known as Anu Mana. That means I will give an example. Please keep in mind that example till we complete inference as a valid Pramana. So, whenever there is a situation demands, I will just give some kind of hint in reference to the example that I am going to tell you. Basically, what inference it is? Now, you as a cognizer, you are seeing that there is a smoke in a distant place on a hill, on a hill which is a distance from you and as a cognizer, you are seeing that there is a smoke. Now, by seeing the smoke, you infer the situation that there may be a fire over there. Now you are inferring the fire on the hill by seeing the smoke and how you can do so? You can do so only when you know the universalness or indeterminateness or inseparable character of fire and smoke in some of the instances. In your kitchen room you have seen that wherever there is a fire there is a smoke. In the candle light you have seen where there is a fire and smoke, you have seen even in case of a lamp and many more other occasions. Therefore, you have a knowledge that wherever there is a smoke there is a fire. That means fire and smoke are invariably and inseparably unconditionally related with each other. And henceforth by seeing a smoke in a distance hill also you can infer that there may be a fire on the hill. So, this is an example of inference. So, first you have seen something smoke. So, here seeing or your perceptual knowledge leads in the continuation to have an inferential knowledge. That means to have an inferential knowledge we must need a perceptual knowledge prior to that. In other words perceptual knowledge or perception precedes inferences. Once you see smoke then the anxiety arises within you to find out whether the smoke exists there independently without fire or something else. So, once you confirm that there is smoke in the distance place, you can claim that there will also fire exist in relation to the smoke. 
So, here if you can see that the pramana is a perception precedes to the inference knowledge. Therefore, we said that anu mana, anu means after, mana means cognition. You cognize smog and after that whatever you have a knowledge, it is known as inferential knowledge. So, first we have a perception, then based on our perception, we infer a particular situation or an object on a particular place. So, in this way, you have to understand anumana. The further the said, literally speaking, anumana means such knowledge which follows from other knowledge. Other knowledge means perceptual knowledge. Gautama as a Naya scholars, written Naya Sutra or considered as the founder of Prachinna Naya or the old Naya. He written a sloka for explaining inference as a valid pramana. Atha tat purvakam trivadam anumanam is the sloka which explains the inference as a valid pramana or inference as a pramana for having a particular knowledge or valid knowledge pramana. What they mean here, if you can see my slides, I say that purva tat purvakam, that means there is a perceptual knowledge prior to inferential knowledge. So, it is a purva before knowledge. Trividam, this means three varieties. That means to have an inferential knowledge, we need at least three propositions or the minimum condition to have an inference is we need, we require at least three propositions. We will be discussing what kind of proposition these are and how these propositions really involve or related with each other to have an inferential knowledge on a particular object. Further, they said that tat purvakam, that means the cognition which is precedent, perceptual knowledge or our perception as a valid pramana precedent the inferential knowledge. And the knowledge we get through the inference will be a valid knowledge and to have an inference we need at least three propositions. The minimum requirement to have an inference is at least three propositions. The first, the foremost proposition may be major premise, the second one may be minor premise and the third one would be the conclusion and the conclusion will be drawn from the premises taken together jointly. And hence for the said that we require three propositions. The first proposition is known as a major premise, the second proposition is known as minor premise and the third proposition is known as conclusion. In the same way, Aristotle explained deductive argument said that we need three propositions. And according to Aristotle, there are four figures in a syllogism. The first figure, second figure, third figure and fourth figure. In the first figure, you find in the first proposition, the middle term will be the subject part. And in the second premise or minor premise, the middle term will be the predicate part. And therefore, the middle term connect the major term and the minor term respectively, which are found in their respective premises. And in the conclusion, you never find the middle term, rather you find only major term and minor term. So, this is about the first figure said by Aristotle. In the second figure, in the first premise or the first proposition, you find middle term in the predicate part. Even in the minor premise, which is the second proposition, there also you find middle term in the predicate part. And hence for the middle term connect to the major premise and the minor premises. As a result, we conclude in our conclusion saying that major term and minor term. In the third figure, what Aristotle said is like C, if you can draw the letter C in the same way they have explained the third figure. That means, in the major premise, you find the middle term is the subject part. In the minor premise, again you find the middle term in the predicate part and hence for you find the major term and minor term respectively in their premises and therefore, the conclusion you draw without any middle term. In the fourth figure, they said that it is same as appears the Z, Z stands for zebra. They said that if you draw a Z, you find that the middle term of the major premise or the first proposition will be found in the predicate part. In case of minor premise or the second proposition, you find the middle term in the subject part. Therefore, the middle term relates the major premise in one hand and a minor premise on the other hand. And as a result, you can draw the conclusion with the major term and minor term. 
So, this is the way Aristotle said about the syllogism. Nayakas are known as logicians, Indian logicians. They also followed more or less same what Aristotle said on the part of syllogism. However, there are few differences you find between Aristotelian syllogism and Nayakas syllogism. Aristotelian syllogism said that to have an argument, we need at least three propositions and the conclusion will be supported to the given premises. In this condition, we can say that the argument will be valid. The argument will be invalid according to Aristotle proposition only when the conclusion does not support to the given premises or the conclusion cannot be drawn by taking the two premises jointly together. However, here Nyaya as a logician said that or Nyaya as a, a practice of logic they said that we need certainly major premise, minor premise and conclusion. We need the three propositions as the basic requirement, but they never mentioned that the first proposition should necessarily be the major premise or the second proposition is necessarily to be a minor premise. What the concern is that an individual should find out the middle term and the conclusion you find there is a minor term and there is a major term and the explanation they said and what are the how they said we will be discussing in the next slide. But this is the first ground they differ. They said that major premise and minor premise not respectively fine to have an inferential knowledge. Second differences if you find I still said that the first proposition and the second proposition and the third proposition which are respectively major, minor and conclusion, they said that these three propositions need to have all the three terms, these are the major term, minor term and middle term. Sharing the same view, Nyayakaj also said that we need at least three terms known as major term, minor term and middle term. But the difference is that Nyaka said that maybe more than three terms we find in an argument, not necessarily we will find three terms. And Nyaka further said that a particular term may be hidden in a particular grammatical structure, in a particular word that as a cognizer have to find out that where that middle term hides and as a result we can have an inferential knowledge. So, we will be discussing in detail when the slides comes. Gautama has given a definition, he is saying that to have an inferential knowledge, the preceding knowledge should be a perceptual knowledge. Therefore, they said that Anumana is that knowledge which is preceded by perception that is of three varieties and three varieties are known as three propositions. Now, the example I have given here is a different one, so that you would not feel at least bored by listening smoke and fire. The example relate to same as smoke and fire, however, this is a new example maybe for you. The same way I have presented how inference it is. He said that metal is expanded due to heat. If you see that like you are seeing a smoke in a distance place, if you see that the metal is burning and based on this knowledge that metal is burning, now you can infer a situation that the metal can be expanded. And how you can infer the situation? Because you had earlier experience that when the metal expanded, that means it is already burnt. So, therefore, you find that the heat metal and its expansion both are universally invariably unconditionally related with each other in all the times. Therefore, you have a perception to a particular iron which is burning now and based on the perception you have anxiety to infer what will happen after it is burnt. Once it will for a particular temperature what will happen? You say that it will expand and how you can infer the situation that it will expand? You can infer the situation because you had earlier experiences, a few experiences in the past saying that whenever there is a metal is heating, it will be expanded. In this way, metal heat and expanded are related with each other. So, it is a Hetu and Sadhya, therefore said that there are two terms, middle term and major term must have a relation very closely or interrelatedly. 
they could not be separated in any one of the conditions. If there are any chances that they will get separated, that means our inferential knowledge may not be a valid knowledge. That means, if any of the situation you will find that, that Hetu and Sadhya, that means the smoke and fire are not related with each other or you find there is somewhere there is smoke without fire or you find there is smoke, on the other hand you find there is a fire without smoke, then all the inferential knowledge that you have may not be a valid knowledge. Therefore, the same it is the knowledge of an object, object of an which is now burning now the iron object due to a previous knowledge of some sign or lingo. Here lingo is to be understood as a middle term. The previous knowledge is due to the universal relation between the major term and the middle term is being present in the minor term. In inference we find the Vyapta relation that is the relation between Sadhya and Hatu. Please note here I said that in case of a burning metal burning iron rod, once it will be burned for a certain degree of temperature, it will expand. In the same way, you see a smoke and since you know that smoke and fire are related, therefore you are inferring that there will be fire. So, in all the cases you find that the two terms, here in one case the example of fire and smoke, you find that smoke and fire both are related in a Vyapta relation. What is a Vyapta relation? A relation will be known as Vyapta relation when there is an universal, invariable, unconditional relation you find between the two term, one is middle term, another is major term. Major term. In case of the example say the, the iron rod, now it is burning and it will for a particular heat to be observed, then it will expand. Here the heat metal and expansion will be closely related with these are the features. One is universally, they will be related invariably and unconditionally. So, henceforth I submit the view that in Nyayakas to have an inferential knowledge they need indispensable the Vyapta relation which is a relation between Hetu and Sadhya. Now we will move to the next slide. In this slide I have explained that how Nyayakas really taking the view of Aristotelian syllogism and also differing in which points. I said that now as a logicians said the same concept which Aristotle syllogism described. However, Nyayaka said that not necessarily the first premise in an argument should be a major premise or the second premise not necessarily a minor premise. Maybe the first premise situation demands may be a minor premise, the second proposition may be a major premise. However, the common point that in conclusion you never find the middle term because middle term helps to relate the major premise and minor premise and it even helps to establish the conclusion which is validity. Same thing I have written you can see that the relation between Hetu and Pakhya the three features indispensably we require to have an inferential knowledge. The relation between Hetu and Pakhya, Pakhya here as in minor term that you can see I have put an arrow here. I said that Pakhya to be understood as a minor term in Sanskrit, in English it is a minor term, in Sanskrit or Nyaya philosophy said in their own word Pakhya. Sadhya will be known as major term in English and Hetu or Lingo may be said in English as a middle term. People said that Lingo Hetu in case of middle term, but anything you like you can speak. If you want to speak only English, you speak only middle term, minor term and major term. If you want to speak only in Sanskrit, then you speak Pakhya, Sadhya and Hetu. Here if you see that the three conditions they made it very categorically. The first one they said there should be a relation between Hetu and Pakhya. Here Hetu is smoke and Pakhya is hill. That means you are perceiving something on a hill. That means on a hill it is a smoky. Now, invariable relation between Hetu and Sadhya. To have an inference, we need a Vyapta relation between Hetu and Sadhya, invariable, unconditional, universal, etcetera, etcetera. So, these are the features to be satisfied for having a Vyapta relation. Here, Hetu is known as smoke and Sadhya is known as fire. He is saying that in all the cases, wherever there is a smoke, there is a fire, or wherever there is a fire, there is a smoke. So, because of their Vyapta relation, 
and you had experience in the past, immediately after seeing the smoke in a distance hill, you infer the situation directly without any dilemma. And the last, I said that the last feature would be establishing sadhya in pakhya. That means, the major term should be established in the minor term. And here, the minor term is hill and the major term will be fire. That means, the fire has to be established in the hill, saying that since you are perceiving there is a smog and you have engaged it to infer a situation and you infer the situation there is a fire and therefore, here fire is a major term will be existing or the fire will exist in the hill. So, this is the way Nyakas explain an inference and how an inference should be. Here you find at least we need three premises and the first, second, three premises and at least we need three terms the major term, middle term and minor term. The only difference here you find that they never said that first one should be the major premise or the second proposition will be minor premise and the third proposition will be the conclusion. He said that either of the two premises in first and second cases, it may be in a reverse way. So, this is the way Nyaya logicization differs from Aristotle syllogism. Please remember this example so that Whenever is required, I will just give a reference to this example, so that it will help you to understand the spirit, the way Nayaka explain that inference as a valid pramana. Now, while explaining the inferences, they said that we need a perceptual knowledge, which precedes to the inferential knowledge. Now, we will see the differences between perception as a valid pramana and inference is another valid pramana. In case of perception, we need not require any kind of depth relation, because there is only one proposition is enough for us, because the object is directly contacting to our sense organs, so that we will have a knowledge. But in case of inferences, the object is not directly contact to our sense organs, we are inferring to a situation based on our previous experiences. Therefore, in inference, we need perception, however, in perception, we do not require any kind of inferences. In inferences, we need a depth relation. However, in perception, we do not require any kind of depth relation. And what are those differences now we will be seeing here. Perception does not require inference. As I said to you, also I said inference depends on the perceptual knowledge. And you know that how really inference needs a perceptual knowledge. Perception does not require Bapta relation and inversely inference needs Bapta relation. Perceptual knowledge is an immediate knowledge of an object, because the sense organs are presented before the cognizer. As a result, the cognizer's senses are contacting to the object directly and henceforth having the knowledge about that object immediately. But in case of inferential knowledge, it is a immediate knowledge, because through perception and through your previous experience, you are inferring a situation. Therefore, it is immediate knowledge. Perceptual knowledge is limited in its scope, because whatever presented before you, you can see that you can have a knowledge about that object. But in case of inferential knowledge, it is different from one to another, which is based on the different kind of inferences or what are the having different Bapt relation. He is saying that inference are, are of different type, because if the Bapt relation is a different type, then the inference also different type. And henceforth, your knowledge on the inference can also different type. In case of perception, it is a always direct perception and you accumulate the knowledge directly. In case of inference, it is immediate knowledge. You infer the some situation through some means, through some medium. And lastly, I pointed out that in case of inference, it extends our knowledge from present to the past. That means, the object is presented before you, which you are perceiving as a smoke. Now, you are going back to the past, because of your previous experience. Now, you are retrieving all the experiences and saying that, since smoke and fire are related, therefore, you can see a fire on the hill, where you have seen the smoke. Therefore, in case of inference, there is a past and present knowledge as a relation. In case of perception, it is not so always, or it is not so often. In case of perception, 
the object is presented before you and you cognize that object with such and such qualities. Here you first have a perceptual knowledge, then based on the perceptual knowledge you go back to your previous experiences which is a universal in character and based on that you infer a situation on a particular object or on a particular fact. Now hope this distinction you should remember and how Nyakos make the clear distinction it is very very elucidately the presented in Naya Sutra. Now there are few constituent of inference as I say to have an inference we need a few constituents or basic ingredients these are at least three premises. Now we are, I am talking about the Naya logic or Naya theory of inference they said that we need at least three premises and these three premises uh, should not necessarily having the order major, minor and conclusion, major premise, minor premise and conclusion it should not have the order. However, they said that we need also at least three terms the major term which should find in the in case of major premise, the minor term that should find in case of minor premise and the middle term which will be commonly you find both in case of major premise and minor premise. As a result the middle term brings a relation between major, major premise and minor premise and hence for in the conclusion you never find any kind of middle term rather you find only major term and minor term. So, there are three constituent three premises three terms these are the basic constituent we require for having an inferential knowledge. The further said that in inference we establish a fact which is unperceived in character because by seeing a smoke you are inferring that there may be fire but however you are you cannot perceive that there is a fire exist on the hill. Therefore, they said that in inference we establish a fact which is unperceived in character by the help of middle term by the help of middle term is by the help of smoke and also there is a vyapta relation found between hetu and sadhya here hetu is a smoke and sadhya is a fire. Now as I said just an English translation of three terms pakya sadhya and hetu or linga it is respectively translated as minor term, major term and middle term. Further they said that pakya is to be perceived but not in form that means pakya here is a hill hill is to be perceived but not in for, but hetu here is the starting point of inferential reasoning. Hetu here is a smoke, once you see a smoke over there then you started having a inferential knowledge. So, pakya is a hill, hill is to be perceived and perceived you perceived hetu on a pakya and after that you started having inferential knowledge and whatever you have inferential knowledge it is based on the vyapta relation that Nayak has explained that a vyapta relation should have between major term and middle term and it should be having invariable unconditional and universal relation between these two terms. If these constituents are not available in case of inferential knowledge that any knowledge that we have may not be considered as valid knowledge. Now, the last point is very crucial for all of us to know that that pancha rupa hetu that means to have an hetu we need five conditions or in other words a middle term have a five conditions for establishing a valid argument and what are the five rupa and how the rupa will be and what are the function of that rupa now will be discussed. But you should remember that there are five conditions to be fulfilled to have an valid argument and to have a valid argument we need a middle term or hetu. In case of Aristotelian logic they never said that hetu are of different kind. They what they said that hetu only should be find commonly both in case of major premise and minor premise. But in case of Naya logicians they clearly pointed out that hetu has to have five conditions to have an 
inferential knowledge. Now let us discuss how they explain Hetu and how they explain the conditions of Hetu. There are five characteristics of middle term or Hetu. Hetu is labeled as Hetu when it is satisfied the following five conditions. These are Pakhya Dharmata, Sapakhya Sattva, Vipakhya Sattva, Badita Vaisya Yattva, the last one is Asat Pratipakhato. All the Sanskrit term has a particular meaning and each meaning will be explaining here. The first is Pakhya Dharmata, that means Pakhya you know, Pakhya means there is a particular term stands for Pakhya and Dharmata, there is a Dharma or duty. Here Pakhya is the hill or you say the minor term. The major term will be the fire and smoke is the middle term. He is saying that the middle term must be related to the minor term that is hill, Pakhya stands for minor term. If the smoke is not found in case of a hill, you may not be worried for having an inferential knowledge whether fire is there or not. You may not be any worry to know that whether there is a fire on the distant hill or not. You become worry only when you see that there is a hill which is a distance from you and there is a smoke arises. Therefore, he is saying that hill and smoke should be closely related. Therefore, my point here is middle term must be related to the minor term. That is explained about Pakhya Dharmata. The second point is known as Sapakhya Sattva. Sapakhya means support. If I say that he is my good friend and he supported me, I can say that he Sapakhya to me. That means supported, always supported. According to Nyakas, he explained that the presence of Hetu in all positive instances in which the major exists. Hetu and major term invariably find in all the places. There should not be any such cases in past, present and future. Having an exceptional situation saying that there is a Hetu, but there is no major term or there is a major term, there will be no Hetu. That means, in one hand we cannot even claim that there is a fire without smoke. On the other hand, even we cannot claim that there is a smoke without fire. That means, in all the positive situation that we have come across so far, we have seen that wherever there is a smoke and there is a fire, because of their invariable, unconditional and universal relation in all the times, whatever experience we had, we able to infer the situation by seeing the smoke that there will be fire on the hill. So, therefore, here also Hetu plays a vital role. The association between Hetu and major term should invariably find in all the cases. The third one, the point I said Vipakya Sattva, that means Nayaka is here negatively defining how really Hetu plays a role for having an inferential knowledge. What they mean here is that to explain something negatively. It is a Naya cause who does this. Naya philosophy try to explain something in a negative way, so that the things can be explained or illustrated much better way. For example, if I see that, look this is a table, you may not agree with this. To have a concrete knowledge of that object say table, Naya cause said that the table is not a chair, the table is not a say bicycle, the table is not a computer, the table is not a your dot pen, the table is not a bottle of water, the table is not a glass. So, here the elimination process start, what table should be and how table is different from others. So, if you can discriminate other object and saying that others objects are not same as that object, that means you have a concrete knowledge about that object and therefore, you give a name to that object which is known as valid knowledge. Therefore, they are saying that to have a knowledge about what is happening in this on the hill, whether fire exists or not, you should find that the smoke is always related to the smokeness and smokeness is different from other kind of knowledge and smokeness is always 
available in case of fire. Negatively, what they speak about that, what they express is that if you find smokeness without fire, then and this cannot be a valid hatu for having an inferential knowledge. There are many situations where if you see that only smoke without fire, then this hatu cannot be related with the sadhya. As a result, we cannot have a valid inferences. So, negatively also they define that how smoke and fire related with each other and there would not be any kind of circumstances where fire and smokes are separated with each other or they are not invariably related with each other. And this is one of the condition of a Hetu and Hetu should satisfy this condition to having an inferential knowledge. Further they said this Badhito Bisayato, what they means it is a counter balanced, a Hetu should not have any kind of counter balanced. What they mean? If you say that the squareness of circle, squareness and circle these two are different concepts. If you say squareness of a circle, it is a vague concept, it does not make any sense of it and square and circle cannot be invariably, unconditionally and universally related with each other because squareness is different from the circle. He is saying that if you choose an Hatu which will have a counterbalance like squareness and circle, then there will be a real issue. In that case also we cannot able to infer the situation or we cannot infer any kind of object on the Pakya. If the Hetu would not satisfy this feature, then the inferential knowledge may not be valid knowledge. That means, a Hetu should not be or might not be the counterbalanced. It should not give this kind of impression saying that square circle or heatness of an ice. You say that how heat is the ice. You say that non coolness of an ice or a piece of ice. In this case, in all these cases you find it is a counter balance. What the saying in the first and what the saying in the second, these two are different. So, therefore, they cannot be associated with each other and therefore, this feature is a rudimentary feature to have an inferential knowledge. The last point they said that the Hetu and the middle term will find without any absent. If you make an absence in case of Hetu and Sadhya in any of the situation, then the Hetu may not be fit for having an inferential knowledge. Now, we will see how they explain because what we have explained so far the two condition first one is Pakya Dharmata that means the term middle term must be related to the minor term in all the situation, all the condition. The second point Sapakya Sattva, Sapakya means support. There we have said the presence of Hetu in all positive instances in which the major term exists. Now, we will see the last three points how Nyaya could explain it. I have already explained to you, now you will read the slides and if anything remains to explain, I will be explaining you. Okay. These are the points they mention it the three points which is found in case of error. The, the third point that said the absence of Hetu in all negative instances in which the major term is absent. What they mean here is that I read further the absence of Hetu, absence of middle term in all negative instances in which the major term is absent. The Hetu must not be concomitant with the contradictory of Sadhya. That means, there should not be any such of cases where the fire will find and no smoke will find. Fire and smoke should be positively find in all the cases and in negatively speaking, there would not be any such conditions where smoke find however, you do not find fire over there. In other words, I will repeat by saying that negatively speaking, there would not be any such conditions where you find smoke without fire or you find fire without smoke. This is the third condition of Hetu. The fourth condition of, of Hetu, they clearly said the Hetu must not be counterbalanced by another Hetu. Counterbalance means it should not contradict with each other. If I say that table is not table, 
it is a contradiction in terms. In the same way, if I say that squareness of a circle, it is a contradiction in term. If I say again, uh, say that coolness of fire, it is a contradiction in term, because the fire cannot have a coolness, because the fire generates heat. But if any of the such situation you find that the fire generates coolness, then the hetu does not satisfy the condition to be fit to have an inferential knowledge, which will be known as a valid knowledge. To have an inference as a valid pramana, which will be resulting as a prama or a valid knowledge, a hetu should be satisfying the fourth condition as well. He is saying that the hetu must not be counterbalanced by another hetu. And the middle term must not aim at establishing such absurd and or contradictory objects like coolness of fire and squareness of circle. So, this point is a very rudimentary point. They said that for example, inference will happen in this situation also. For example, in your family, suppose you ate a ripe mango and you have seen the color of mango, which is a mixture of yellow and red color and having a good shape, neat and clean. And whenever you just take the slice of that mango, you find the, the, the taste of that mango slice will be very, very sweet. Now, continuously you had the same kind of experiences because your parents brought the mango fruit for the family and you have eaten the slice of the mango and have the taste of it and you have seen how the mango looks like. In a situation when your parents ask you to go and purchase mango, you go to a shop and you see that the mango looks like a good mango and having the mixture of color yellow and red without knowing taste you can infer the situation that the mango will taste sweet because of your previous experience. Here he is saying that in this case it fails because there are many such situations where the mango will appear with the same color, same size. However, the taste of the mango will differ. In this case, whatever you have previous knowledge, because of that knowledge, you try to infer the some situation which is not correct. Therefore, your argument or the inferential knowledge may not be valid because you need to experience at least more than one variety of mango of that size, that color or that shape. Then only your inferential knowledge will be true. What I mean here is that the sweetness of a mango and the color and the appearance of the mango are not necessarily or involved in a kind of depth relation. Further to explain the sweetness the taste, the sweetness of mango and the appearance of the mango cannot be related unconditionally, universally and invariably in all the cases and all the situation. Therefore, whatever you infer just by having two, three mangoes in your life or you have eaten the same sort of mango which is purchased by your parents, you can infer the situation will be a invalid inferential knowledge. Therefore, they are saying that you must have a previous condition which have satisfying the Vyapta relation. The fourth point indirectly explain the same thing. It is saying that if any of the two Hetu will bring to the existence to have an inferential knowledge, make sure that these two Hetu are not contradicting with each other. If they are contradicting with each other, then any inferential knowledge you have that may not be treated as a valid knowledge. And therefore, like coolness in fire and uh, softness in table and uh, say squareness of circle, all these are truly an issue for having an inferential knowledge. Therefore, the summit to have an inferential knowledge, this condition Hetu should maintain it. Then only any knowledge we have must have an inferential knowledge and the knowledge will be a valid knowledge. The last point they said, the presence of counteracting regions or Hetu leading to a contradictory conclusions. An example we have given here, all immortal lives are human beings. What I mean here, if I read it, you can also explain it because it is self explanatory. The presence of counteracting regions or Hetu leading to a contradictory conclusion. What they clearly said that you should not make such a statement where the Hetu will be contradicting. If I say that all immortal lives are human beings. This cannot be the case. 
because there will be no such situation which permits us to claim that there is a human being and he or she is immortal. He or she won't die in any of the situation. Therefore, they said that this Hetu should satisfy all the conditions to have labeled as a Hetu and to be fixed in an inferential knowledge and the inference will be a valid pramana for having or resulting a valid prama. Therefore, they are saying that like perception, inferential knowledge is also equal valid because inference has certain rudimentary components and all the components should be necessarily find in case of inferential knowledge. In addition to that, we find the Vyapta relation and the Vyapta relation is nothing but the universal, invariable and unconditional relation between Hetu and Sadhya, the between the middle term and the major term. And if these features you do not find in case of inferential knowledge, then any knowledge that you gain through the inference cannot be treated or judged as a valid knowledge. So, this is the way Nayaka explains the inferential knowledge and now it will be convinced to you how the inference really plays a role in many of the occasions in our life to have a valid knowledge. Just a brief recap what we have said so far. We said what is the inference and what are the basic components of the inference. In addition to that we have stated also the difference between perception and inference. We also said that perception precedes inferences. Further we said that how these components or the constituent of an inference really useful to have a valid inferential knowledge. Further we said that there are five conditions a Hetu should satisfy to fit in an argument and for supporting an inferential knowledge to be a valid knowledge. Now I hope it will be understood to you how really Nayakaj explains the inferential knowledge. In the next class, we will be discussing the logical and psychological aspects of inference. Thank you.